I want to give you an opportunity to attend the best conference that you've ever attended in your life on December the 1st through the 3rd at the December ICCM conference. We have great speakers that's going to be there that's anointed to take your life to a new level. This is the only time that we're going to mix the practical with the spiritual in this incredible seminar because your portfolio is going to change. I mean, you're going to really have some wealth. Instead of just talking about it, you're going to have it. Join me right now, iccmworldwide.org, so you can register. I'll see you December the 1st through the 3rd. I'll see you then. I'm excited about seeing you. I'll see you then. You may be seated. You may be seated. Thank I, that applause will go right to your head, so I have to cut that off. I'm going to keep Jay, Jason, my uh, grandson, near me. Uh, I have uh, asked for this spot here. It it was opened to me by Dr. Chitwood. Thank you very much, sir. But a, a tremor has gone through the church as some of the most precious of precious of the people that we know and love are moving against the tithe. They're trying to bring it to a point to where the tithe no longer has anything to do with the local church. I, uh, I, I speak not against an individual. I speak against a doctrine. Amen. Now, in the scriptures... If, if you have the vaguest thought that tithing started with Jews or with Israel, it absolutely didn't. The whole old world, they were tithing Mesopotamia, uh, Babylon, the Greeks, all uh, tithing is an, no one can find the beginning of it as it's practiced or uh, it as it has been practiced. And uh, until I had uh, access to the internet, I wasn't able to research a lot of the books that uh, just clearly state places where they were tithing. But there is one tithe that you can find the origin of. You can find the beginning of it. It's the tithe that took place when Abraham was coming back from the uh, battle with the kings, Chetilomer and, uh, and those that were... Uh, Massed uh, against about 10. If you take those kings, it sounds like about four kings that are, that are named or five, but you're going to find that one of them was a king of nations. So he's gone out now after these Chetilomer and the, and the kings have taken all that wealth and pulled it together. And in the scoop, along came Lot and the wealth of Sodom. So when you see Abraham coming back from that battle, he is probably the richest man in the world. From 10 cities are even as many as 15 or 20 cities that were liberated. He now walks with all of that wealth under his control. And as he comes back, <clears throat> the first person he meets is not the king of Sodom. The first person he meets is Melchizedek. Now, time is not going to allow this morning. I'm not going to take a long time. But Melchizedek is without a doubt the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that. And, and let me say this. If he's not, then we have the Father eternal, the Son eternal, the Holy Spirit eternal, and Melchizedek eternal somewhere running around in, in heaven because he's laid out to be an eternal being. But what I see here, and... Uh, <clears throat> I had a season that I had a great revelation in finance, and there came a, <clears throat> a an abusing of it, abusing of my message, and I started backing away from, and it, it, it was just about, I was about ready to retire from all of the foolishness, people teaching the hundredfold, you, you, uh, if you send in $2,000 by Christmas or by Easter, you'll be debt free. And you know you've heard it hundredfold, 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 hundredfold. And hundredfold is very seldom, very seldom. Jesus deals with it. He says when a significant gift is given. Uh, Peter said, well, I gave it all away. He said, well, son, look here. You will not be left without because that significant gift, whether it be father, sons, lands, whatever it might be, that significant gift will see the hundredfold. 
100 fold, 30, 60, and I'm happy with 60. I can live the rest of my life with 60 fold return. 30 fold, okay, drop down. I can live the rest of my life with a 30 fold return on my giving, but that's not, that's not my message today. What I'm moving to now is as he meets Melchizedek, there's some language here that has troubled me all my life. And of the last few years, I'm seeing it now, what it really means. Jay, turn this off, son. Uh, what I'm seeing is <clears throat> that uh, we're going to hear that a partnership has gone into here. Abraham and God go into partnership in the ownership of the earth. And you've struggled with those words. Let me read them to you. Start that 18th verse of the 14th chapter. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he, Melchizedek, blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, comma, this Abraham who is of the Most High God, he is also the possessor of heaven and earth. And then he goes on and says, and blessed be the most high God, which hath delivered him into the, uh, thine enemies into thine hands. And, it gave thee the, and he gave the tithe unto him. Now, here's what first, and I'll come right back to possessor of heaven and earth. When you tithe today, we're not tithing some old tithe that the Jews may have rolled in in six or seven different tithes. But this is the Abrahamic tithe. It's a tithe that has to do with a covenant that takes us, and in a moment you'll see, it doesn't change uh, your receiving, but it changes the place that you can depend on for your receiving. A covenant is cut that now sets that no man, and you'll see that in a moment, no man is going to be able to call Abraham rich. He's not, why would that be important? Because that was a story about Abraham. King of Egypt made him rich. Uh, what's that other king? Abimelech made him, made him rich. I mean, that was a story around the campfires about Abraham. Yeah, he's rich, but Abraham made him rich. I mean, but Abimelech made him rich. King of Sodom made him rich. But now he said, no man's going to make me rich. But that was the statement to the king of Sodom. But what had happened here as this thing happens of them going into partnership for the world, uh, he now is in a position that he is saying, no man is going to make me rich. You follow? No man. He says, now my source will be God. My source will be God. If you can catch that now to this point, because I've run ahead a little bit, I'm going to catch it up now. He said, and he blessed, I'm back in the 19th verse, and he blessed him and said, blessed be Abraham, the most high God, the, uh, Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thine hands, and he gave him tithes of all. So if you can catch this, the tithe that today we, that we as uh, believers, as Christians, the tithe that we now put into the hands of the house of God, that we put into the house of God, that is not some tithe that was taken out of the old attitudes of the nations this is a brand new tithe that can be found where it started and this tithe is one that is paid by abraham to melchizedek but it is a very unique tithe because watch what happens here because now and abraham said to the king of sodom the 22nd verse i have lifted up my hand unto the lord the most high god possessor of heaven and earth wait a minute abraham possessor of earth heaven and earth and then God, possessor of heaven and earth. And I know that is a very strange thing to hear unless you happen to notice Romans. Romans. And if you look in Romans, the fourth chapter, and the 13th verse, speaking of Abraham, for the promise that he should be the heir of the world. Are you catching that? He was in a, this thing starts back 
with that confused language that everybody's tried to explain, Abraham, possessor of heaven and earth, and also God, possessor of heaven and earth. They went into a partnership at that point, and it was a real, it was a real nice deal for Abraham because it was a 90-10 split on the prophets. A 90-10 split on the prophets. Are you seeing what I'm saying to you? Now watch. Well, now watch. Read it to you again. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. God and Abraham went into partnerships in between the 18th verse of the 14th chapter of Genesis and the 18th verse of the 15th chapter because you have a, you have, you have a, a falling away of days with Abraham. But God is outside of time. One event takes place. He meets with Melchizedek, and as he meets with Melchizedek, he now is told, here's the deal, son. Would you like to have it? Would you like to be in partnership with me for the world? And he says, I want you to tithe on all this new stuff that belongs to you, but it's going to be a unique tithe because there will be no increase for you. Do you understand how significant that is? There'll be no increase for you. All of it went back to all the kings, got all their money back again. Abraham left with nothing, but what Abraham left with now was a deal that God was his source. The weather wasn't his source. What the, whoever was in office was not his source. D d do you follow that? Now, when you, when you follow that through, you'll find that this covenant that is cut in the fifth chapter, it runs all the way to the 18th verse. That is one event with God from Melchizedek meeting to the covenant being closed. And now God and Abraham are in business together. They now are the possessors of heaven and earth. And the tithe that you tithe now, uh, I think, let me get, let's, let's deal with it about what it says here. Uh, I'm in Galatians. Uh, it says uh, in the 16th, ch third chapter, 16th verse, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He said not and to seeds as to many, but as to one, and that, that seed which is Christ. This is the, now when I watch something with me. When people that understand the name Christ, if they have a ministry, here's how they identify it. The anointed one and his anointing. So if you get around me, I can put his anointing on you. But if you understand it from the local church, it's the anointed one and his anointed. That's what the Christ is. It's the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, and this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of non effect. That covenant that was cut between 1418 and 1518 of Genesis, that is a covenant that had to do with a whole new source, a source that you were separating out. You were separating out of the world system now, and things were going to start happening to you that were out of rhythm with what was happening in the earth. Are you, are you picking up what I'm saying to you? Now, with that said, with that said, let me, let me quickly move to something else. And that's not going to take a long time for me to say what I got to say. I hope we got program enough for it to fill it in when I'm done. But now, one of the things that is probably a key, no, how many, how many, give me the key scripture on tithing. What is it? Malachi 3.10. Well, if Malachi 3.10 is in the Old Testament, that's one thing. But if it's in the New Testament, if it's seen operating in the New Testament, we got to say, wait a minute, tithing must be for the New Testament because the Bible says it was operating in the New Testament. Now, if you can take this 
you can probably take about anything, but get ready. Go to Malachi. Malachi is a unique book. It stands between two, two covenants. Now, watch with me, please. There's no question. Now, you're going to need your Bible for this. You got your Bible? There's no question chapter 1 and chapter 2 is about the Old Testament saint, talking to the Old Testament saint. But if it is a transitional book between Old and New Testament, it's strange that we have 400 years. They say that nothing was said because I see chapter 2 and 3, it's good, chapter 3 and chapter 4 of Malachi are both totally, completely in the New Testament times. Yeah. Wow. Brother John, how can you say that? Well, let's see if the Bible can say it. Malachi 3. Behold, I will send my messenger... And he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly... Whoa, wait a minute. A sudden coming? That's not the first coming. First coming, he was conceived, gestated nine months, obscurity 30 years, and then three years of ministry, rejects the temple of his day, goes to the cross, and establish a whole new order. Okay, are you picking up anything I'm saying? All right, but, 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 but that could be just one word. You can't make the whole thing on one word. But let's see. And the, and the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Now, I hit on that a little bit. The first temple he didn't come to, but, this next, but the second time he comes, he's coming for the temple, which is the body of the church, which is the home of the Holy Ghost. Are you, are, you getting, are you picking up anything here? You picking up some, some strange words here? Okay. Even the messenger of the covenant whom you delight in. Nobody delighted in the old covenant. It was a drag. This new covenant, any, any, everybody in free, Jesus wants to save you. Everybody delight in that covenant. Amen? And you go on now uh, to the temple, the covenant, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, see, he will come. Wait, and catch this. If you deal in an Old Testament setting and someone says the coming of the Lord, you can't say, oh, I know that's the second coming. See, if I say the Lord's coming, I don't have to tell you which coming because he is already come. Now he's coming to the second coming. But this is standing where he hasn't come yet. So he's identifying what he's viewing. He's looking into the New Testament. Okay, watch, watch. Who may ab and, and then uh, he shall come, says the, but look at number two, but who may abide the day of his coming? Everybody could abide the day of his first coming. Woman taken in adultery, thrown in the street in front of him. He kneels down next to her. People coming around the corner would have thought he was taken in adultery with her. He identified with the sinner. I mean, they called him a wine bibber and hanging out with, with, with shady characters. Uh, are you fighting? That first coming, there was nothing foreboding about it. There was no pressure on anybody except get ready, get ready. I'm ready to save the world. Are we, are we learning? Well, words mean something, don't they? Second verse, and who, may and, and who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appeareth? Oh, my. The first coming was not an appearing. It was a birth. The second coming is going to appear. My, 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 are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Now, this, you catch this because it's very possible that somebody that's in your financial uh, plan at your church is watching somebody on television that's talking them out of participating in your program. Do you understand? And let me say, still giving, yeah, teaching giving, but not teaching giving in the order that you're teaching it. And your basis is not that you're trying to bring something Old Testament into the New Testament because in a minute as I build this case, you're going to find that Malachi 3.10 is a picture of something that was happening in the New Testament time. 
Catch this. Catch it now. Watch. Going a little further now. Make sure I don't skip anything, Jay. Coming. Yeah. Uh, verse, Jay, quick. A, a refiner of fire. Oh, yeah. He's like a refiner of fire and purifier of silver. Uh, that he shall uh, purify the sons of Levi to purge them the golden uh, as as gold and silver that they may make an offering unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Please watch this with me, please. Old Testament prophets saw into the New Testament, but they were not given a New Testament vocabulary. So when he tells you what the fivefold ministry was doing, he has to use the word that he has for his day. He said the sons of Levi. They were the ones that handled the word. He was looking right down at this time here. And this is the problem that we got in, 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 in this world today on tithing. It's not that it's not in the book. It's just it's so little of it being taught and preachers hiding from it. And then, too, one, they quit doing this. They quit giving us statistics. But about 10 years ago, they would show how, what percentage of the church was tithers. And parallel to it, you'd find that pastor's tithing was at the same level, like the people, like the priest, like the priest, like the people. You follow what I'm saying? A redheaded man and a redheaded woman will have redheaded kids. Uh, I, can't, I don't have the verse of scripture on that, but you can believe me on it. Are you getting what I'm trying to say to you now? Until the... See, the anointing never, you're in a church where nothing good's being taught and you think you're going to stay there and you're going to clear it up. They'll, they'll clear you out. Anointing never flows from the hem, from the, from the membership up into the leadership. Anointing flows from the leadership down the garment into. Are, are you picking up what you're hearing? Well, you got to get tithing straight in the, in the, in the pulpit before you're going to have it straight in the pew. But now, watch this. Now, now, here's where the whole thing probably has to stop. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the, pleasant unto the Lord as in the day of old, as in the former years. Okay, now, Jerusalem. Okay, the new Jerusalem, the church. Okay, we get that. But Judah, how do you get into Judah? You have to be born into the tribe of Judah. Well, let me help you with something, this secular thing here. How many of you heard of natural childbearing? It's not natural. Not a bit natural. For it to be natural, it has to be the way it was the first time. First time there was human reproduction. First time there was human reproduction, a man brought forth a child. Wow. Glory to God, they took, they took that rib out. Yeah. And he made the woman. And now watch, these walkers are walking around. Well, a man could have a baby. I think a man. Well, it's in the Bible, the man, the Lord Christ Jesus had every one of us. Well, I don't know, Brother John. Well, think about when they split his side open. What happens at birth? Water and blood comes forth. And a man started having children again because the womb of God was opened. Oh, God. Are you catching what I'm trying to say to you? I mean, this tithe that we're talking about, you're going to see it right smack in the middle of what I'm reading to you right here. It's not Old Testament. It's talking about right now. Are you okay? Yeah. You're quiet. My wife taught me that. She said, I used to think they didn't shout, didn't do nothing. She said, John, people shout when they agree with you. People are quiet when they're listening to you and trying to understand what you're saying. And I'll come to near to you to judgment. My, my, wait a minute now. How does that, how, the, come near to you to judgment? There's no judgment in that first coming. Yeah, yeah. Malachi's not talking in the third, in the, in the third and fourth verses, chapter. He's not talking about the first coming. He's talking about the second coming. Yeah, yeah. Catch this thing. This, this, see, and watch it because our traditions is what makes this thing of non-effect. I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerer. Honey, he's not talking about that palm on the side of the town with the hand up and palm reader, the sorcerer. No, he's talking about the pharmakia, that the, 
that the Revelation speaks of, the drug dealer of the day. What's wrong with the world today is the drug dealing that's going on, and even to the point now that our, poor, our, 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 our lame government just lets the fentanyl come across the border and it's just absolutely killing, killing Americans and wiping out, wiping out vast portions of our population, the drug dealer. And then he goes on, and uh, false swearers, well, no liar will have his part in the second, uh, an oppressor of the hireling and his wages. My goodness, will you look at what, what has there ever been a time like the slavery in America? oppressed the hireling in his wages, and then come the other way from California. All along, there's, there's, there's graves, unmarked graves, where Asians died trying to put that railroad in. Didn't get their wages sent back to mom and dad in, in China. It just buried them, and that was just one less person they had to pay. Well, God says, we're going to straighten that out. There's going to come a time that, and I, 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 listen, I don't understand reparations, and I don't see how you do it. But something's going to happen to start putting things right again. Because the wealth, and see, we're talking about the wealth of the wicked. Don't get upset about reparations when I say it. I'm not got some plan that some group has. I'm not saying that. But something's got to happen because the wealth of the wicked has got to flow back to the children of God into your hands and my hands to do the things that God wants done. And let's do it. We go on. Let's, let's move away uh, for the fatherless and the widows. My God, the fatherless and the widows today, what we do is we just kill their kids, get the whole thing shut down before it's a problem. And from the right to fear me, saith the Lord of hosts, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. That's why Israel is still in the earth today, because I'm the Lord. I, I'm, uh, that's why the sons of Jacob are here. I, I'm not going to change about Jacob. Even from the days of your father, you're gone away from mine ordinances and kept them. Return unto me, and I'll return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. We're looking for the Lord to come back. How does it get the Lord to come back? We come back to him. Will a man, <laughs> but they, you said, wherein shall we return? All right, now listen to this. What is the big holdup on the second coming? Return unto me, and I'll return unto you. Well, where we come back to? Will a man rob God? Yet you rob me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. You're cursed with a curse. Now, I understand that we're being rebuked, and one of the great points of this new change about the tithe is that God would, in, under the new covenant, no one gets cursed. Well, if you want some good news, Ananias and Sapphira, there it is. If you want some good news, whoa, Simon the sorcerer, open your eyes, son. You're not blind. That's just some, some delusion you're having. I mean, he didn't say you're, you're going to be living under the curse. He said there's a curse that will be placed upon you. And if you don't, you got to be real careful because we had a movement, and I was a big part of it. I tried my best to be a big part of it. The word of faith, but you have to be careful because it is no such a thing as just never anything unhappy happening to you. And then let me, let's deal with something else. Where did this tithe, not tithing thing come from? Well, if I get in this row and I walk, I'll get down there to where that lady in the red dress is. I cannot get over there if I go down this road. But if I go over here, I'll end up where that green thing is. See there? Well, when you get off the road of sound doctrine and you get into antinomianism and this grace teaching, you're on a road that is heading you to, hey, we don't have to tithe. Hey, walk a little further and hey, everybody got saved. It's universal salvation. It's a road. It's a road. I hope you're catching this. I mean, I was happy when uh, the first when I first started hearing about the antinomian message, that my sins were gone. <laughs> hey, I, I, I'm an old Baptist. We know that. <laughs> and then God says at the speed of light, they're traveling in two different directions into infinity. Never for the east is from the west. I mean, you can't get me back in the judgment hall. 
And if I sin, I better look out because I don't know. Nothing's going to happen judicially. But parentally, I've got a parental problem. I have disobeyed my God, my Father, and I better be repenting. I love antinomianism insofar as my sins are gone, gone, gone. Yes, my sins are gone. Catch them in the sea. Well, don't do that. Is anybody catching what I'm trying to say to you? Don't hide from this thing, but don't look for the old answers because that thing is loaded for bear for the old answers. But this tithe that we tithe today is an Abrahamic tithe. And it ties us to an agreement with God that eventually, as we saw in Galatians, will end up with us owning the earth, lock, stock, and barrel. That's what the Bible says. And the tithe that you make now is you stop tithing and you cut yourself off from the deal. Dr. Chitwood, I'm going to say more about this at other times. But thank you so much, sir, for letting this get recorded. Those of you watching, please stay focused because you are with a revelatory people. Let's all stand to give Dr. John Avancini a great hand clap for bringing us a life-changing revelation of confirmation that the Word of God is still true today. Bible says he changes not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. John Evansini, we love you. We appreciate you. What a message of revelation confirmation today. Wow. Let's give him another big great big hand. Come on. I'm Dr. H. Michael Chitwood, and I hope you enjoyed that video. If so, take a moment and comment on it and let me know. Also, take a moment to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. And by the way, hit that little bell in the top corner to make sure you're notified when I release new videos. And by the way, take a look around. We have lots of informative video and content on our YouTube channel, which I know you will enjoy. Now, if this video has touched you or made an impact in your life, click the link in the description to support us by making a donation now.